As I mentioned yesterday, we are still celebrating Christmas, so we are in the octave of Christmas. So for six days, or, or for eight days rather, every day is like the first day of Christmas. Today we focus on John the Evangelist, so it is his feast today. And yesterday, if you recall, we had Saint Stephen the first martyr. And I mentioned that the word martyr means witness, so Stephen witnessed by the shedding of his blood, but John also witnesses to a very great extent, especially by his writings, but by his life also, and he receives the grace as if he were a martyr, because they tried to martyr him, they tried to boil him alive in boiling uh, oil, but apparently, miraculously, he escaped uh, unscathed. So he, he really deserves to be referred to as a martyr, but also as a witness. Now in today's gospel reading, we have an account of the resurrection scene when Peter and John run to the doom, tomb after they hear the message from Mary Magdalene that he has been, uh, that Christ has, has risen from the dead. And notice how uh, John arrives first but does not go in. He only goes in after Peter goes in. And why is this? The reason is not because he wasn't curious, but because he honored St. Peter, who was the head of the apostles, the first pope. So just to kind of honor him with, with, the, with his uh, role as the Pope. He allows him to go in first to examine what is inside the tomb, and only then does John himself go in. So he's very humble, and he's humble even though our Lord refers to him as the beloved disciple. And we might ask the question, why was he the beloved disciple? many reasons, but most uh, commentators say it was because of his purity. Some of the other uh, apostles of the Lord were older, and most of them were married, whereas John was quite young, and we know this uh, based on the time that he died. He was quite young, but also uh, he was not married, so he was able to have this greater purity, and as a result, a greater love of God, and also a greater understanding of the mysteries of God. So the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, has often been referred to as being more mystical than the other gospels. And notice in today's first reading, he's basically uh, declaring the incarnation or talking about the incarnation. You know, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. So he's giving witness to this. And notice how he also mentions and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. So the eternal life is Jesus Christ, a clear statement that Jesus is God. You know, he mentions this in other places too. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made through him and so on. But notice at the very end of this uh, passage that we have in today's first reading, he states, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. We are writing these things, we're telling you about these things, we're sharing these, these things with you, these truths with you, so that our joy may be complete. Why would that give them joy? Why would it give John, the evangelist, joy to be sharing these things with others, to be writing about these things? Well, partially because knowing the truth gives everybody joy, but also the truths of our Lord and his saving message, his message of salvation. It brings joys to all those who embrace the message of salvation and knowing that others can also embrace the message of salvation and be saved and make it to heaven, saved from the reality of hell, saved from their sins, saved from their misery, this would give you great joy. So when we share the word of God, it ought to bring us joy. Many people are afraid to share the word of God, to talk about Jesus, to talk about the message of salvation. 
They're afraid, they're afraid they're going to put their foot in their mouth, say something wrong or make a mistake or not be able to answer the questions that are put to them. Don't be afraid. Just say, oh, you know what, I don't know the answer. I'll get back to you. I'll do some research. I'll ask Father Stephen. So don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Because when you share the message of salvation, it will bring you joy. It will enable you to understand and know your faith better because you'll be able to explain it better. You know, we learn to explain things by going through the process. You know, we might explain something and we realize, okay, he didn't really understand fully. Maybe my explanation was faulty. So you improve on it the next time and the next time. So let us look for those opportunities to witness to our faith, to imitate the example of John the Evangelist and yesterday, uh, St. Stephen, the first martyr. Let us be willing to share our faith, even if it means entailing a certain amount of suffering or opposition or persecution.